because it's a moment where we bring down some of the anthroposophia, the moment of, 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 of wisdom and love and freedom that's part of the, um, the beautiful spiritual reality that is being portrayed on stage. So we bring that through. So how, how, how does your role as Romanos uh, work with the, like, what kind of interactions do you have with the, with the manager? Well, shall I? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Romanos is trying to build a bridge between the idea that Hillary wants to bring into the factory mm -hmm. and the people who are involved in that and the um, manager who is opposed to that. <clears throat> mm -hmm. The manager sees all of that new idea as, as pretty unsound, particularly mm -hmm. from a point of view of um, business operation, but also sort of sketchy spiritually. Um, and so the compromise that Romanus is trying to work is that um, Strader will be um, kept on as part of the new group that's going to go with the new production um, into the future, and uh, that the other mystics will be excluded, and that he comes and he tries to sell this to the manager mm -hmm. as a way to go forward, and the manager is still pretty skeptical about it. That's the, that's the um, conversation that we have together at the beginning of scene four. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and can you maybe tell me a little bit uh, about how you, like how your own path brought you to anthroposophy? Were there turning points in your life? Was it's, there something in your childhood that, that uh, sort of foreshadowed what you might want to do as you get growing up? Oh yeah, it was, it was, um, it was very clear to me almost as soon as I could begin to think that um, I was headed in this direction and actually the, the speech, one of the speeches that has, that the uh, manager has towards the end of scene 14 mm -hmm. speaks to my spirit path in a very direct way. Uh, so when I, was, when I was young, when I was three and a half, my um, grandmother died and I asked my mother where she went and she said, oh, you know, heaven. And I said, oh, what's heaven like? And she gave me kind of the Presbyterian line on heaven, or it might have been Methodist. She was raised Methodist, and it all kind of blended together anyway. And I thought about this, and I realized, oh, you know, if, if we're going someplace, after we die, we must come from someplace. And we're going, you know, I'm cogitating all this when I'm three and a half, four <laughs> years old. Yeah, a lot of people do that, you know. Yeah, and so when, 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 I was, when I was four, right around the time I was four, the light turned on for me, and I went to her and I said, how come we don't remember the other times that we were on Earth? Oh, okay. okay. And she became very agitated, and she said, this is it. There's nothing after we die. There's nothing before we're born. It's nothing. So your grandma, your poor grandma is... Well, I knew, I knew. <laughs> it's you a know, bit of I, a I had, I had touched a nerve here. I had touched a nerve yeah. here, and because she so contradicted herself, I knew. I yeah. was on to something. Yeah. It was yeah. a long time again before I spoke with her. But, um, and so, as I grew up, I was aware that there was a large body of occult knowledge that nobody that I knew had anything to do with. When I was 18 and a half, I met a guy at college who told me all about Rudolf Steiner and anthroposophy. I mean, everything he could fit into the space of three or four hours. And who was it? somebody who was actually trying to use anthroposophy as a means to power over other people. Oh, okay. And um, when it became clear to him that my interest in anthroposophy was about anthroposophy and not about him, he broke off the relationship. Ah, there you go. But I was left with this question, you know, all right, well, let's say that these things are real and that there is somebody, Rudolf Steiner who are, or um, whoever it would be, who who has a consciousness of them, um, how would I be able to trust him? Mm -hmm. How would I be able to, to trust somebody to tell me the truth about something that there's no way that I have to verify? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I thought about this, and I thought about this, and I arrived at a fairly well-articulated 
picture of what this man would have to look like. And I didn't think about it in terms of Rudolf Steiner. You know, of course, the name was always there. But then one day about, oh, I guess it was about a year and a half later, I was walking down the street in Chicago, just past some very ordinary bookstore, and there was a copy of The Course of My Life, the autobiography mm -hmm. of Steiner. Mm -hmm. In the window, I went in, it cost $5. And that is what I had in my pocket. And I went back and forth. And finally, I bought the book and um, read it, and I knew this is, this is the guy. Yeah. This is the guy. I yeah. really get this guy. Yeah. He's my teacher. Yeah. At the end of scene 14, or towards the end of scene 14, um, uh, the manager says to Hilbert's wife, if I entered in a realm that drew near mysticism, then I would surely need that guidance that that man alone could offer me, who won my confidence through my own being able to fully comprehend his character. And for the audience, I think it's a good idea if you do that one again, because people will have to listen to that a few times before they get the whole meaning of that. Yeah. So do it yeah, again. It's... Do it again. If I entered in a realm that drew near mysticism, then I would surely need that guidance that that man alone could offer me, who won my confidence through my own being able to fully comprehend his character. Yeah. This, uh, this is the relationship that the manager has won to Ramanas. Mm -hmm. And it so strongly mirrors my own path to Rolf Steiner. It's, it's quite mm -hmm. remarkable for me to yeah. find these lines in this play. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in other words, you have to have your own discernment to see whether the other person has truth or not. That's right. You, that's know, right. you can't you, go you, without your own discernment. Right. You, you, you need to have the ability to feel whether there is truth living in that person. Yeah. And um, it came across very clearly in the way that Rudolf Steiner wrote about him, um, about himself. So, so uh, around what age was it when you, um, when you got the book? I was 20. Oh, wow. I was 20. I had just so you've, 20. Been, you've been into that sort of thing ever since? 40 years. Wow. Yeah. So how did you get to the play then? Well, in 1998, I was um, in Spring Valley. I had a, uh, I had a job at um, Sunbridge College, and Barbara um, recruited me to that year's production of the fourth drama. Was that the year that uh, they went to Dorno? That was the year they went to Dorno, mm -hmm. yeah. And um, I played um, Hillary, interestingly uh -huh. enough. Yeah that year and so it's 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 quite nice for me now to have the chance to play the manager and I have mm -hmm. this the scene with Hillary and now I'm on the other side of the conversation mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. gives a lot of insight mm -hmm. um, and so I saw uh, Barbara again last summer we've stayed in touch over the years yeah because you don't live here right yeah I'm uh, down in Durham um, Durham North Carolina North Carolina yeah and um, so I saw her last year in Ann Arbor, and she said, yeah, I've got a role opening up for next year's play. You want to be in it. Mm -hmm. So that's how it happened. And you have the time and the wherewithal to come, and because it looks like uh, most people have been here for six weeks. Am I correct? That's right. I've been here on weekends, but just this last week. Yeah, I'll yeah. The whole week. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing. It's amazing, actually, how, how much time you actually need to do get together. Because uh, how many is all together? Because uh, lighting and, and you're with me. Or at least 38 people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I that mean, was it's... the most recent count we had. Yeah. Excluding I mean... the photographer, the <laughs> dress rehearsal. <laughs> 39 yeah. with him, yeah. yeah, yeah. So another... This, this auditorium is more um, intimate than the threefold auditorium. Ah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So the, 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 the audience is right there. There's mm -hmm. a lot more lights. It's a lot brighter and hotter. Hotter, yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, so the, just the, the closeness and the heat itself mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. were pretty intense. It's a beautiful place, though. It is. Yeah, yeah it's good. It yeah. I like the balcony. 
Yeah, yeah, so do I. Because, because there's that that's upper where I, surrounding looking down into That's it. where I live. <laughs> yeah, it's nice. I like it. Anyways, yeah. I, I thank you both. I mean, it's a privilege to, to sort of, for people, not just me, but for people who will be looking at this, to, to have a look behind the scenes and who mm -hmm. are the people and how did they get to something like this? Because it's quite a sacrifice. You know, to, to take time out of your life and, and do things that you have a real passion for and, and, and uh, bring it in a, bringing it in a living way to people. So I thank you both. You're welcome. All thank right. You. Thank you. Okay. If I entered in a realm that drew near mysticism, then I would surely need that guidance that that man alone could offer me who won my confidence through my own being able to fully comprehend his character. Oh, I can get it. See, it needs yeah. a few times. And it's, uh, so I've wondered, you know, how can I break that into two, into two sentences? It's difficult. You can't really. You can't. And, and people have to kind of, I, you see, I think that's one of the beauty of, beauty of the mystery dramas. There's something that you hear and something that sort of stands out and say, wait a minute, I can connect to it, but it went too fast. Yeah. And then you can go to the mystery dramas and have a look what that was. I mean, I can see there's quite a few places where I'm going to look to see what, what was actually said because there are so many words all at the same time that it's pretty hard for people to comprehend, mm -hmm. you know? Like I say, you know, I needed to have that line two or three, four times in order to really get into what the meaning is, you know? Yeah. I mean, if, if I had to condense it, I would say you have to have discernment right. into who you, uh, what or who you put your trust into. Yes, you have to have that feeling for truth and then see, is that truth? Can you feel that truth yeah. in that person who yeah. purports to speak about things that you have no way of being able to verify? Yeah. Yeah, not at the time. I think um, the word Ahnung in German is kind of appropriate for that sort of uh, living into whether somebody is speaking the truth or not. It's a very difficult word to translate. Oh, into for English. sure, for sure. Yeah, you I know? use five or six different words to translate. I know, I know. Yeah. So, well, thank you. Well, thank you very much. <laughs>